Dalitz, the notorious murderous gangster, actually received an award from the Anti-Defamation League in 1985 due to Dalitz's very generous financial donations to both the ADO and Israel. A quote from the Las Vegas Review-Journal article entitled The Double Life of Mo Dalitz by John L. Smith touches on Dalitz's background. Early in his life, Dalitz was a bootlegger and racketeer mentioned in the same breath as Meyer Lansky and Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. In Cleveland, one longtime member of law enforcement would tell the Kefauver Commission, quote, ruthless beatings, unsolved murders, and shakedowns, threats, and bribery came to this community as a result of gangsters rise to power, close quote. Dalitz was considered part of that rise. Indeed, Mo Dalitz was killed just four years after receiving the award in a gang shootout that left seven others dead. Meyer Lansky's granddaughter, Mira Lansky Boland, was described in the Village Voice article by Robert Friedman of May 11, 1993 as the ADL's top fact finder in Washington. Jonathan Paul, while working at the Navy's Anti-Terrorist Alert Center, stole thousands of pages of classified documents for Israel, which, according to federal prosecutors, quote, could fill a room the size of a large closet, 10 feet by 6 feet by 6 feet, close quote. The Navy's Anti-Terrorist Alert Center was where some of the most closely guarded U.S. secrets could be accessed. Pollard was sentenced to life in prison as a result of this massive espionage. Robert Friedman wrote in the Village Voice, Pollard's handler was Avi Sella, an Israeli Air Force colonel whose wife worked for the New York ADL as a lawyer. Pollard later wrote to friends that a prominent ADL leader was deeply involved in the Israeli spy operation. The ADL was not disbanded or otherwise punished for their role in this spy case. In the waning days of the Clinton era, Many questionable pardons were granted to infamous criminals. Probably the most noteworthy example of this was the pardon of Mark Rich, quote, a defiant fugitive accused of the biggest tax ripoff in U.S. history, close quote. Clinton made a lot of enemies during his presidency, especially amongst Republicans. So naturally, Republicans led the charge into investigating Pardon Gate. Abe Foxman, director of the ADL, was, quote, mentioned in internal memos of the free Mark Rich team as a man who could be helpful, close quote. The ADL stated it wanted to help Mark Ridge because of, quote, humanitarian reasons, close quote. In reality, the ADL helped Ridge for two main reasons. First, he was an ardent supporter of Israel. And second, Ridge donated a quarter of a million dollars to the ADL in the years leading up to Pardon Gate. In fact, Abe Foxman, according to Brian Blumquist of the New York Post, quote, admitted he sought a presidential pardon for Mark Ridge a month after his group accepted a $100,000 donation from the billionaire financier. Verena Dobnik of the Chicago Tribune wrote, In January 2000, Zivi Rafiak, an Israeli businessman and friend of Foxman, called to say Rich Foundation head and former Mossad agent Avner Azule wanted to meet the ADL director. That was followed by a note from the foundation pledging $100,000 to the ADL, Foxman said. In February 2000, over dinner in Paris, Foxman suggested to Azuli that Rich seek a pardon. Carl Perlston wrote quite plainly that he did not help himself, quote, by dwelling on our national director's central role on behalf of the ADO and devising and wangling a pardon for criminal fugitive tax evader Mark Rich, close quote. 